Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back again. We're here for the DAC 2017 CIS Grand Finals. We've made it through the group stages, we've made it through the playoffs, and we've made it finally here to this final best of three. It's Effect taking on Team Empire for the final spot going to DAC. I'm Lyrical, going to be joined as well by Lacoste. How you doing, man? Hello, Dota 2 players all around this beautiful planet. It's Lacoste and my good friend Shenanigans Gangsta, also known as Lyrical, bringing the best Russian Dota right now. I'm stoked. I can't wait. It's going to be wonderful. And these teams played against each other just yesterday. There were a lot of, uh, you know, blood spilled on the on the sand out there. And, well, we saw a lot of Sven also coming out from Effect, played in the support role. And already Team Empire, they went for the Slardar Weaver, first couple of picks. And now Effect are taking what I believe is going to be the support Sven again. So for anybody out there that hasn't seen us, do you want to break down a little bit about what this hero brings to the table and why they have rated him so highly? Yeah, I wonder how much many times can uh, team effect actually pull this off He's i love it uh pretty much the supports when what he does uh, goes kind of as a position four hero tries to roam a bit at the start uh maxing the storm hammer and uh, i mean maxing war cry first obviously to give his uh, team extra movement speed and that extra armor on level four it's plus 20 armor against slarder weaver who are minus armor heroes it's so good. So Sven is the kind of a hero that goes in a team fight, uses a storm hammer, boosts their, boosts his team with war cry, and uh, pretty much that's it. Uh, five man lineup, pretty much coming out from team effect. Well, and the interesting thing about this as well is that it's actually something that they hadn't run before uh, against Empire. In the two games that we watched against Empire, they opted to not take the Sven. So now they're finally going to be revealing it against Team Empire. And I'm sure that Empire watched the games that happened earlier on in the series. Uh, but maybe this is that little bit of holding back in the previous series that they're going to come out now. Um, do you think that it shuts down well enough what Weaver and Slardar do that it's something to be really concerned about? And with the Lone Druid, do you think what what more do this, does their draft need now? Reserve time. Well, they need uh, initiation and uh, some more control in heroes right now. Lone Druid can be mid, can be safe lane. It they will see what uh, Team Empire picks, so they will adapt. They have a late game secured with Lone Druid, uh, plus with Swin. Probably, as I mentioned, uh, some uh, five-man oriented lineup. As we can see, Empire uh, banned uh, Underlord, which Effect also likes to play, and is really good for five-manning up. Definitely. And also now a Ten Witch Doctor taken. Many. Not a great surprise there either. It's something that they've been running Five fairly seconds. consistently, I want to say. Um, and it also Radiant gives them a little bit of pick. dynamic outside of just the straight up uh, physical damage. You can throw Maledict down on top of people as well. Granted, we might not see that maxed out this game. They could just go for the healing ward. But Lesh is going to be the answer for effect. Mixing up a little bit of that magical damage in with the physical Ten as well. Uh, really strong laning hero. And I feel like you throw out a storm hammer into an Five earth splitter if they wanted to run this Lesh in a support role. That's four seconds of disable with just two Reserve points or time. like the level one on top of it. This could be a really strong dual support combo if they wanted. Yeah, they might play it as a support duo roaming combo, and they can play Lesh mid. Uh, for now, they have a lot of options opened, uh, because Lone Druid at the start, if it's safe lane, he needs only a little bit of help from the very start, just need one, two levels advantage on the offlane hero, and if it's Sven Lesh duo roaming around, he can be alone and they can focus on mid or the uh, offlane. You know, something kind of interesting, I, I was just Giant looking real quickly to make sure that the stream was all set up correctly and everything was fine. I follow Sashlo on uh, on on Twitter, and he literally just tweeted uh, all four respects, all four first bands respect bands. Uh, so he's tweeting in the middle of the draft. I don't know how I feel about that completely, but uh, <laughs> apparently they're, they're willing to do it. But Tusk taken for Empire, um, a hero that's made a little bit of a comeback. Do you like it? Uh, yeah, I like the Tusk pick. Uh, his uh, Sigil, uh, really good, uh, also against five men five lineup, seconds. which uh, Effect has right now, and uh, good for saving people and blocking with time. Ice Shards, uh, got a little bit of buff uh, in the previous patch with his talents, 
so Dial it's good to go. Bad. Yeah, we saw that yeah. played, I think, the other day by Seneco, if I'm not mistaken, Dial and he pick. maxed the sigil first as well, which was uh, very interesting. No alchemist either, so there's not going to be any of the early cheese that we sometimes see. Last pick for effect with the dazzle taken. This does signal a mid lesh, of course, so we're looking for the offlane. Anything strike your fancy? Uh, might be a clockwork, maybe, remaining. or uh, or a bat rider. They 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 lack that uh, good in, good initiation time. hero. That would definitely be strong. I mean, Sven's great for the early game, but when you get to the later stages, there's a ton of answers to Stormbolt. So, or Stormhammer rather. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, for Empire on the other side of the way, they're probably going to need their mid at this point. Is there anything that Lesh has a trouble dealing with? Well, Lesh as a mid hero, uh, how it's um, scaled, split earth maxed, and the uh, diabolic edict as well. He has a good attack animation and uh, is good if Swen rotates, but uh, can't get really close with the diabolic edict if he is laning, uh, let's say, against OD or uh, Invoker. Kind of hard to get close to it. Yeah. That could be pretty cool. I, I definitely would love that. Effect taking a lot of time. You can see Empire used a lot of their reserve time getting to this stage, and now Effect needs to figure out what answer they want. Like, Tusk can rotate into the mid lane and cause some trouble as well. Like, early on, Lesh might end up running into some issues in that regard with either shards to block him off in the mid lane, or possibly even just snowballing in and finding a kill, particularly if we do see something like the Slardar rotate in as well. Do you think that they might just run a dual lane of Slardar Tusk? Yeah, they actually might. Uh, uh, they need to see what effect is going to pick for the off lane, so they can put the dual lanes, even though dual lanes are not... Uh, we don't see that quite often lately. It's pretty much 3-1-1, uh, but uh, they can do that. Uh, Slardar. Uh, oh, you called it. What a guy. Radiant team. Prediction pick. God. Prediction God. Prediction Lacoste. That's what's up. Um, what is it about him that just makes it so great in this lineup? Uh, for Clockwork? Yeah. Well, he can uh, control Slardar really easily uh, until the mid-game. Uh, Witch Doctor as well, Weaver, Five good initiation if the, the time lapse is on. Only way to escape it is uh, with Tusk snowballing. And Reserve that's pretty time. much it. And there's no four staff. Uh, carriers in the enemy team besides Slardar, and that's gonna kick in really late. All right, well, Shadow Fiend is the last pick. We're gonna play the bumper, hop into the game in just a second, but all across the board, Effect versus Empire, gearing up to be one of the best games so far. These qualifiers, when they played earlier, uh, it was a 2 0, but each of the games were incredibly close and they could have gone either way. So stay tuned, everybody. We're heading into game number one. Oh, it's beautiful. The transition back into the drafting phase, absolutely fine. Do you like the Shadow Fiend pick? Shadow Fiend, uh, some more extra armor, heavy damage dealer. Uh, yeah, I like it. He's going to do fine on the mid lane against Lone Druid. All right. Um, you, you think it's going to be Lone Druid mid and not the not the Lesh? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Lesh. He does fine against Lesh as well. Okay. Lone Druid is the safe lane. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of curious to see what this Tusk is going to get done. If there was a place that the Tusk would go for you in the early stages, what should he pr be prioritizing, do you think? This is a hero that was really good at roaming early before. For mm, yeah, it's... Uh, they can't really kill a Clockwork if he places Cogs really well, so there's going to be a rotation on Shadowfin. Shadowfin are easy to kill on, on early stages because uh, Sven rotations double stun with Lash, so I expect him to be on the mid lane with um, Shadowfin or just rotating top easy kill potential with Slardar. All right. Well, we'll have to watch how that works out. Um, traditionally, also, if you think about the way that Shadow Fiend is being played uh, back when he was in his real heyday, 6.83, 6.84 times, it was always with a defensive support because this hero is very susceptible to ganks early and often. And granted, there's not a ton of those heroes for the side of team effect, but if Roger happens to make a rotation over, has those boots first already, uh, there's certainly some kill potential there. So they're going to need to make sure that at least Tusk is going to have a TP if he's not in the mid lane or something else there to try and make sure he can stay alive uh, in the early stages. 
Yeah, but Tusk has a wind lace plus uh, ghost equipment for uh, boots of speed, so we expect some uh, good movement from them, maybe even on the mid lane. If he doesn't uh, manage to get anything on the off lane with that Slardar, uh, Sven meanwhile has boots of speed, as you mentioned, plus smoke of deceit uh, in the quick buy, so he also wants to make uh, early rotations on the mid lane. Gonna see some good old fashioned CIS Dota. Everybody running at each other and trying to find kills. Uh, worth noting that that clockwork pick also, th this was something that we saw Ghostic playing amazingly well the other day. Uh, so granted, it was a last pick clockwork, so it's not like they denied it away from him, but it's something to consider. Maybe they'll try and take that back in the later series, Empire, depending upon how it works out. Yeah, Clockwork, uh, a lot of people underestimate what uh, Clockwork is doing uh, through the mid-game. He's just uh, spamming the Rocket Flare, just uh, scouting. That's the but that's his thing, like showing where the enemy team is so the carry and the mid can farm. I do believe also in the top lane that Ghostic realizes that the wraparound could be coming. He spots Roger here. There was this really nicely placed ward over to the side, which spotted the movement over there of effect. So won't be able to really punish him too much, I don't imagine. And that lane yeah, should the, be okay. Yeah, the lane is already pushing for team effect, and uh, Slaughter is going to get some good XP with that boot of speed. He's going to be hard to get, but uh, if Sven manages to get a stun, they might actually get a kill on him. Okay, so kill potential there, depending upon how the lane gets played. Ghost is going to try and soak up a little bit of experience there. Did have to pop a Slither and Crush to uh, ensure that CS, but now they're both going to be into the mid lane. Um, Pushka still is not leveled or anything, so they could go for a snowball into stun on left if they want, yeah. but let's just quick. Yeah, but look at the ward uh, that effect has uh, they can see the movement of a slarder. If he comes from the shrine or from the river, they can see him, so Lesh is fine. Okay. Uh, over here to the bottom lane, we haven't talked a heck of a lot about it. Clockwork is going to be able to disrupt this pull at least for a second, but it looks like it's still going to push under the tower a good yeah. deal. Sven is coming to the bottom lane. Good rotation smoked. As I mentioned, bought it early. If he gets a stun on Witch Doctor, he's going to die. Clockwork has a boot of speed as well. Ooh, looking for it now, and if he manages to Smoke. get in range... Smoke ran out. Yeah. Oh, Miposhka invis. This is a big rune right here. I don't know if Afonij knows. He is going to walk forward. Still only level one from Miposhka and throws it out. Shards a little bit off the mark, so they're not going to get that. Really unfortunate. Arzik was already TPing as well, and now they make the rotation onto FN. First blood drawn by that Lesh, and well, the stuns come out a little bit stacked on top of each other. In fact, get it. Yes. Yeah, they could have gotten the first blood for Empire if uh, shards were actually placed right, but this way, effect punishes them. Well, very unfortunate there for Empire, and... Well, it is worth noting that that was something that had to happen. The Leshrac was kind of getting owned in the CS department. Six and three versus the 14 and six. Uh, but it does at least even it up a little bit for him as we're going to have FN just taunting away in the mid lane because he's that type of guy. Yeah, FN still 16 to seven, even though he died doing a really well. Well, Shadow Fiend is a stronger hero in one versus one matchup without any rotations. Well, you can see that it's come still to the uh, tone of around a thousand almost net worth lead for effect, just based off of the good laning that we've seen. Uh, it does look like also he's going to heal back up the bear. Bear goes back home, picks up a couple items. The mobile courier. Why not? Arzik. No TP this time. Maybe he will get it. So if they try to go on Lash again, he will be ready. Still no grave, though. He's only level 2. Do you think that they've been able to get enough out of these early rotating type of heroes from Empire, or are you starting to be a little bit concerned? Oh, actually, Roger might be thinking about going on a ghost stick. There comes the stun, a couple right clicks, needs to hit it right, but he's going to make it to the shrine first, so Roger just going to have to back out now. Shrinegaming.com is a full HP and mana right now. Oh, nice play by Maposhka. Threw out the shards to get him a little bit of vision so he could snowball up to the high ground, but still is going to be hit by a couple battery assault charges. There's a rocket flare as well as a heal bomb coming in from our Zeke. Is almost within range, and, well, the shard... Uh, can't quite catch him there in the cogs. But, Ghostic? 
On an Afro Ninja, they have already used the cog, so he's going to end up going down. Roger's still chasing as is Sashlo, and well, they're just going to be able to taunt away, dropping the ward onto the high ground, but FN is out and away. Seems like that bitch doctor to me. Nice, nice heal bomb. They did lose Lesh again. Uh, very frustrating, I'm sure, for Team Effect at this point. The Fun Ninja has not been able to have the laning stage that he wanted. Yeah, if you look at uh, Lash's build, he went for Earth, Split Earth and uh, Lightning Storm. Uh, mm. So he can get a kill on Shadow Fiend. He just initiates with the Lightning Storm, slows him down. Pretty much it's the purge thing, 75% movement slow. And then he can hit a stun really easy. Because there's no way he can uh, go with Split Earth and the Diabolic Edict into Shadow Fiend. He's just, just going to get double raised. This was the build that they were doing for a very long time and what everybody sort of hated Lesh for for a while, but it got pretty heavily nerfed. Do you think it's still viable enough? Like, can you actually still play it yeah. this way? In this lineup, it's fine. You can dominate the lane this way, but uh, not anymore. He, he needs to get the uh, Diabolic Edict after... I don't think he needs to go for any more points in Lightning Storm. Okay. Because... Uh, of the push potential and uh, it's gonna come in late if he doesn't start uh, leveling it right now. Right, we'll keep our eyes on that for the less Shrak as so we want to make sure that he is off to a decent start. He's definitely still in trouble against the Shadow Fiend. Um, very much the one who's missing out of these cores. As far as offlaners are concerned though, they've been able to do a pretty effective job of zoning out Slardar. Ghost Stick's still been jungling at least a little bit, but Clockwork has been able to get a lot more out of the laning phase. Almost level 5 now. Well, Clockwork had the Nazir lane. He was only against Witch Doctor and Weaver. Plus, Witch Doctor has to care when playing against Clockwork because he can solo kill him. Level 3 or level 2 battery assault with just cogs would be enough to kill a Witch Doctor if he gets caught out of the position. And over here, Honenj, he is going to be able to dodge the gank at least for a moment, but Maposhka is still sticking around. And does look like they're going to be able to go for the snowball. Tries to get the split earth off. It's not going to happen though. And well, that should be the death of him. Can't even throw one out. And another taunt there. They're going to be able to get double stunned. But FN is having a very good game for himself. As bottom lane, they do manage to kill off that Witch Doctor. Like you're talking about, solo kill potential is there. Yeah, Witch Doctor needs to be careful with his positioning when playing against uh, Clockwork. Uh, is uh, he actually diving? He doesn't have mana for time lapse. Now he got it. Oh, Chappie trying to get out in a way is going to be able to make that escape. I'm sure very frustrating for everyone into there. Would have loved to be able to pick up that kill. Radiant structures are fortified. Meanwhile, Shadowfin just dominating the lane on the mid. Witch Doctor TPing, refilling his bottle, which is always great. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Plus side that we do have for Team Effect is they're able to take down that tower. Uh, we do have a lone druid still who's getting his free farm throughout this. And we've seen what this hero can do when he's left his own devices in the early stages. Yeah, that hero is just... In my book, he's still overpowered with that uh, range thing. And Dyer's Rabid, how his uh, talent tree is scaled, minus 40 seconds respawn time on level 20. Still needs a little bit of nerf hammer from uh, Ice Frog. So in your eyes, with all these taunts that are coming out from FN, you've been in the pro player seat before. How, how much does that affect your play here, Dyer's if your if your team affect? Oh, you mean the taunting from Shadowfin? Yeah, Fiend? like, are, do you guys start to get a little bit tilted there, or what's, what's the, how, how does that work out? I I don't like it, uh, but uh, be because it distracts uh, attention. But still, you can uh, do other stuff. Watch for other people's items. Meanwhile, instead of doing that, or just uh, watch if someone plays the ward and stuff like that. Okay. So you think it's a detriment to the person taunting? If you're if you're playing against it, you don't start to get angry. Nah, no. Okay. Just right. need to be calm. I'm with you. Slardar trying to go in. Not gonna get it. I did see the Lone Druid also steal the Bounty Rune away from the Shadow Fiend and well, back mid. They're able to give a little bit of experience here to the Tusk and the Witch Doctor while Sven farms top as well. So everybody trying to be very effective around the map right now for effect. Hey, that's a, that's a little pun. Um, but also not taking too many fights. I like how you laugh <laughs> at your own jokes. <laughs> Thank you. You're the only one, I think.
<laughs> but here comes the push in towards the mid lane. King R has taken one point in that voodoo restoration. Doesn't really matter because the tower goes down. FN, he's happy as well. Clockwork is trying to make a move. He hit level 7, level 4, battery assault. That's uh, almost 1.8k total damage. If he catches anyone solo, pretty much that's a dead hero. Okay. Yeah, and they haven't really been able to... I mean, it's sort of an interesting way the game has gone, that everybody is backing out, not really trying to be too aggressive. Uh, Sven is still getting his levels here, and I think you've got to be fairly happy with how the support Sven's game has gone so far. Well, he's zero, zero, 001, only one kill. There hasn't been much action, what we actually see from CIS region. Uh, but they needed uh, Sven to get some levels, so Lone Druid uh, went to Forest. So, uh, Sven going for that Helm of the Dominator build. Uh, we saw Roger playing uh, Sven. If the game doesn't go right, uh, he goes for Medallion first. If he feels comfortable, he goes for Helm of the Dominator into Medallion. Yeah. And here's a big rotation. This could be one of the first moments where you really start to see the game break open a little bit. Mapochka shards on cooldown now. Does have a snowball available and uh, looking for the stun. Is going to be able to snowball away. Nice play there as well. Should be able to escape with the hook shot comes in. And well, now he's in a heck of a lot of trouble. King R shows up as well as Chappie. But it does look like if they went in, this would be a pretty scary four or five man to fight into. Yeah, they had to. Use less stun, Sven stun, both missed because he dodged it and had to commit with the uh, hook. But uh, still gonna take the tier 1 tower, there's no way you can defend this anymore. Shadowfin is just gonna keep pushing mid, get some free farm on the mid, and uh, Chappie just running top, tries to push the lane, get as much as he can out of the, that 5 man on the bottom. So do you, do you like the Shadowblade build? We've been seeing it more and more often in the CIS region. Um, is there anything that's scary about it going forward as a Shadow Fiend? Well, it's a good item, gives him what he needs. A lot of taunting coming out from Shadow Fiend as well. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Clockwork, if Clockwork wants to go for a solo kill, he needs to bring Dust, and the Dazzle has to invest also in Dust and Sentry Ward, so it means he's gonna be poor and uh, good to dodge Sven stun. They can't initiate with that. Also, you can get a solo kill on supports, even on the Lash, who doesn't have much HP, so good pickup. Okay. Uh, and you talked about the later points for Lashrak trying to go into the Diabolic. He is now taking that, so can farm out the jungle as well as push down towers when they do eventually win those fights. For now, you can see Sedoi just farming out the enemy jungle. If you're not going to be here taking it, then I'll certainly take that farm. So Effect, by and large, have been able to build up a pretty substantial lead. I'm feeling like this is not the same team that lost to them in the earlier games. FN now does only yeah, have the one point. Fiend. This could be really big if he manages to find it. Can't even just go for the big raise, but there's going to be the initiation. Sedoi forced to catch back. Nice shard's going to be able to keep him there. That is a kill going their way, and Aponinj is going to be able to be grave. TP is available as well, but it's far too much, and he's going to try and deny the neutrals. Not going to happen. Two already dead. But we did see Empire lose the Witch Doctor. Very much Clock worth no it. Is dead as well. Wow. That's the Shadow Shadow Blade Shadow Fiend right there. Great initiation and almost a two thousand gold swing. It's what Empire needed to pull that back into their favor. Maybe a signal of things to come in the very aggressive style of play that we're seeing. Yeah, well, that's how you build items. If you have enough money for Claymore and you want to go for Shadow Blade, you're not going to show it. You're just going to keep it at bay so you have that surprise effect. Uh, once you get it, uh, both uh, components up, you want to surprise the enemy team like he just did. By the way, I need to mention real quickly, there is a mix-up in terms of the... Uh the counter up at the top, Empire is not up 1-0. That is incorrect. The game is, or the series is 0-0 zero, zero a piece. So uh, nobody be confused by that. I'm sure somebody's going to come in later and be like, Empire already won? What happened? What is this? <laughs> but, uh, are biased. But uh, that's not the case. It is indeed just uh, a 0-0 zero, zero at this point. As maybe a match in the mid lane. A little bit of a battle, Bruin. Yeah, I can confirm it's a 0-0. Zero, zero. Thanks for that. <laughs> Was I not trustworthy enough? What the hell? <laughs> well, just in case. Yeah. In case they don't believe me. It's fair enough. Okay. Well, Afroninj, he's going to be here as well. The two points in Diabolic Edict. This tower is going to be taking a lot of damage and does eventually fall. But Empire just split in the map in the meantime. 
Yeah, Ghostic working on that blink dagger, 300 gold away. Roger, you know, this is actually looking like it could transition into a real farming Sven at the rate he's going, with Helm of the Dominator already up. Like, it's not bad. Darius can, they want to find Shadowfin, but uh, he manages to go out. Sven, uh, well, uh, he can scale into late game with uh, having a great cleave, but uh, there's not going to be enough farm for the team effect for both Swen, Lash, and uh, Lone Druid on the map, especially if uh, Empire starts to pressure them right now. I guess that's fair, yeah. It could be really tough to make that happen. Um, top tower is under but attack. at least picking up something every now and then. It does look like King R here is going to be spotted, looking for that initiation. They drop a ward, miss out on the Observer ward that was placed, but they do still have Chappie up here in the top lane, and it doesn't look like Clockwork wants to go on him as of yet. Yeah, Empire doing really well this game, besides uh, King R, kind of in a bad position, 0 and 3, only level 6 at uh, 15 minute mark, just brown boots running around. Need a good team fight to actually get back into the game at some levels. Definitely, and oh, Shadow Fiend, he's up there front and center, they're on top of Sedoi, counter initiation play comes out, they are going to be able to control him, and Shallow Grave comes out at the last second, nice reaction, FN cannot get that ulti off, the Witchstalker ultimate is going onto our Zeke, but he is not going to die from that, Sedoi also walking away on 60 HP. Two already down, Roger looking for a stun in just a second, trying to get the body blocks out and away, but they're going to be able to run down this Witch Doctor, who is going to fall now. Yeah, Roger doing his thing on the Swen, level 9. Uh, Shadowfiend couldn't pull the Requiem of Souls, so that's kind of bad. And there was no Weaver in this fight. Well, Empire maybe a little bit kerfuffled here. This is the second series of the day for effect, and... Maybe already a little bit on the way. Nice four step into the cogs. Chappie going to be pushed back out. Ghost Stick gets the counterplay, though. So this is going to be turning back the other direction in effect. There's the rest of their heroes. They're coming in. Sedoi is here now, and they are going to not get the Gemini attack onto Clockwork. So he walks away. Now they've got eyes on Chappie as he comes out, but can they get the stun? Chappie's still running. Ghost Stick there as well. Looking for that initiation. He's going to be able to blink away. And Chappie. Chappie, no mana. He has mana of oh, both. He's tipping out. Actually, use the stick three charges. That's close. Very, very close. Lashrak has yeah. has uh, diabolic edict maxed right now, so it's easier to fight to push five man Dota. And we're also seeing Sven after going back for treads is going to build into an armlet. This is. He feels comfortable, got a lot of gold from the last fight, two kills. And uh, he feels like he can go into the uh, late game. That that support Sven kind of feels to me uh, like a position four silencer being played. Uh, scales well into the mid and late game. Uh, if you have enough gold, you can switch easily with the item build. Yeah, it's pretty nifty. It's something that we've seen more and more often recently. Um, and it's not as if he, he doesn't have to like get a lot for himself either we, we've seen this support Sven work really effectively against minus armor strats with very limited gold so it's something that I'm expecting to see more of as we delve further and further into this patch yeah. meanwhile lone druid 10k net worth he's so farmed a uh, few gold away 400 gold actually away from Mjolnir has dragon lance and maelstrom power treads uh, he needs to be focused in a team fights. Not exactly easy to do with both the Dazzle running around there, Clockwork to just mix everything up, and then the Sven stuns. Not to mention his natural high movement speed and Savage Roar. This feels like a just about a dream game for Lone Druid. Maybe the only big thing would be the Shadow Fiend initiation with Shadow Blade, and well, speaking of which, it could start it off pretty effectively here, but. Oh, they actually ran the bear through. Uh, now their initiation comes out onto our Zeke. He's gone. A good way to start the fight. Roger there as well. Gets the stun on a Chappie. Looking for more. Requiem of Souls does come out. Sash still going to be able to push him back out and away, though. And already they've lost the Tusk and the Slardar. Now trying to find more. The bear is going to see if he can chase down King R. Over here to the side. Looks like Chappie will escape. 
But King R might not be so that lucky. God, that's damage. Ahead. That range plus that damage. It's attack range on level uh, 16, almost a thousand range. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, plus that the 55. Is, uh, yeah. You it's hard to fight into Mjolnir, put on Spirit Bear, just uh, running around people. Well, and to me, that felt like just about as good of an initiation as you could have had. Like, taking the Dazzle out right at the start of the fight, no Graves. I don't know if they had Weave down on top of them. Uh, is there anything that Empire can be doing to take the initiations better? Uh, they have done the good part, initiated on Dazzle before getting any spells off, but uh, Effect really looking strong. They're gonna, it's just gonna get stronger and stronger. And this uh, Roche is gonna go down. They can't fight at the Roche Pit. Shadowfin is on bottom. Free Aegis for Lone Druid. Yeah, and you see Sashlo here even gonna just block out with the cogs. Easy peasy. Sedoi picks it up. They take off the bugs. And Effect are ready to go again. This draft working to near perfection. Yeah, Sven uh, dominated the Alpha Wolf creep, which is best creep in my opinion because of the auras, and uh, he just has him on the move onto Lone Druid, so he has uh, more damage. That's, for those who don't know, 30% increase the damage, which is absolutely insane. There's a moment there where maybe a Sven Blink Dagger instead of the build towards the Armlet might have made the difference in killing off the... Yeah, I wanted to mention it also. Armlet is good, but uh, what they have from initiation is Clockwork Hook, which uh, has uh, 50 seconds cooldown, and uh, you need something else to run down on the people when they start running. Pretty much that's it. Leshrac has uh, Bloodstone, is going into Yule Scepter, which is going to help uh, get some pickoffs also. Yeah. Already 13 charges on that one, and... Well, if they're able to finish off that Yules pretty soon, it could be quite helpful, but we'll have to see how they can take the next couple of fights. In the meantime, Tusk is here. And looks like they want to try and defend this tower for a moment, at least. Kind of a scary prospect. Yeah, just the oh, oh look in. in. Nice play there onto King R. That's going to be a stun, and that should be a follow-up kill as well, I believe. A couple more hits, yeah. Roger doesn't really care that much. So tanky, this hero. Yeah, we just saw how tanky he is with the Ring of Aquila armor, Helm of the Dominator, extra armor, plus Warcry. And uh, was there a weave on it? They're gonna back out for a second, but Maposhka just gonna drop Sedoi. The right click's coming in, and Empire do not have an answer. They drop down the Sentry Wards as well as an Observer, and oh, another Sentry to boot, why not? The buyback comes, and everybody from Effect is going to back out, at least for the moment. But they're weaving up and going back in. They have a vision on them on the top. They, they killed the tier 3 tower and placed a ward in their base, but the sentry just dropped. Gonna deny everything. Clock has another hook in five seconds, so they want to reinitiate uh, because there's no buyback on the tusk and uh, Lone Druid still has ages. This, this rocket flare as well just being so effective at getting them into position to start the fight. So Sasha looking for the correct initiation angle. Ghost is there. They get the counterplay. It actually controls the bear. Maybe in a little bit of trouble right now. Sadoi going for the right clicks. They throw out the Requiem. Sadoi still alive. Very low. Aegis intact for the moment. And they are able to pop it. Grave not coming out from RZ. They throw another weave down. Going to try and stack it up. Sadoi controlled. Can they find the kill? He turns to fight. Is not going to drop his FN in some trouble. The Walrus Punch comes out. It's going to control that one engine. Now there's the time lapse back after the buyback from the Slardar and still very slowed, very low. He is going to die. Doesn't even get the deny. Ghost Stick trying to find more. The Roger's stun does come out. He's dealing a good bit of damage with that armlet already, but there's not really a ton of people there. And RZ, no mana for the grave there either. Yeah, they have a nice chase. Uh, Slardar bought back. Uh... Chappie got a triple kill with that uh, three defusal blade uh, charges popped and uh, he has almost enough money for a BKB. Yeah, he got it. Uh, still, they didn't lose any Raxes, so a lot of gold went for Empire there. Yeah, it seemed like a bit of an odd decision. Clearly wanting to make something happen with that Aegis, but by the same token, if you take the tier threes, you can just open up the uh, shrines and then put yourself in a better position for the next Roche fight. So. Maybe it's it's a not, 
Yeah, it was not that great of initiation from Clockwork. He kind of blocked uh, his team there and uh, bought enough time for Empire to regroup and posi position themselves well. <laughs> and taking the bounty rune while Shadowbladed right under Sasha. That could have been an opportunity for initiation. He does have another hook, spots out Chappie. Does he decide to go? No, he's just going to go for Maposhka instead, but a little oh. bit late on the draw. There were hmm. many ways to make that work, and that was not one of them. <laughs> Lone Druid uh, working towards the Scotty just to give some more extra stats, more armor, more HP, and uh, that slow attack. Oh, Slardar, maybe bit off a bit more than he can chew, is going to end up paying for it. Bug's still on all these heroes, but with the Warcry, still rather tanky. Uh, and we saw in the fight outside the base how much Sven can tank and actually deals the damage. That position for Sven actually cutting the three heroes HP in half, that's huge. Oh god, another weave. They're getting set up to go here in the mid lane. We'll see if this initiation is any better this time from the clockwork. It looks like they're just focusing down these barracks. Take it down and then get out after the fact. Stun? They're just holding it. Well, maybe not. There's the snowball initiation. This could be really bad, though, if they take the wrong one. All right, good. They snowballed onto a creep, and that means that they don't go into the middle of effect. And effect are going to just back out. Yeah, they even forced half the bear. They don't want to don't want to lose it. 300 gold. Uh, really nice play. If Ooh. you check the... Oh, th this is the play I want to see. Always fun to watch. FN hook shot it in, able to catch him, control them. BKB is popped. They are going to try and do it. Actually, ends up four staffing away from the rest of the team as there's the walrus punch on a Sedoi. He's gone, but they did lose the tusk. Go stick and a miss a little bit there. Avenge up in the air. Defusal blade. Oh my god, he's taking a lot of damage. But Grave, can he kill down FN? Not going to be there. And well, there's a little bit of a taunt for good measure. Why not? That's not how you want to initiate. Uh, the smoke play was good, but uh, there was no follow-up stun on that Shadowfiend who has a BKB, so he got a big uh, Requiem of Souls up, plus good stun from Slardar, and we were just right. running around dealing tons of damage. I mean, you need to be in a good position with uh, either Sven or Les just to follow up with the second stun and insta-kill Shadowfiend. Yeah. And maybe that does come about when Roger finishes off his Blink Dagger. He's almost completed it. Another hook shot just a little bit off the mark there for the Clockwork, who has kind of been struggling a little bit with the past couple of minutes. Maybe it's also just a bit of a team thing as well. Yeah. Shadowfin finished the Hurricane Pike to be effective against Clockwork. Always good item to pick up. Slardar working towards his four staff. Uh, Tusk, uh, Medallion of Courage for some more extra armor or just boost the uh, your team going uh, for that Talisman of Evasion. They'll get it this wave. So Solar Crest plus 12 armor plus extra. Miss Chance against Sven, Lone Druid. Really good item. He talked about also that long cooldown for Clockwork after Blade Mail going immediately in for Aghanim Scepter. We saw some builds yesterday where it was things like Lotus Orb and other stuff. Effect realizing they just need that hook off cooldown at all times to make these fights happen. And now smoke movement by Empire. Oh, they might think they're safe with that rocket flare going over the top. Chappie, he has found the... Clockwork, there's the play. Jump in, immediately taken down. Now, maybe looking for more. Sort of indecisive about if they want to go. The Diffusal Blade is going to end up finding that kill on the bear. And, well, Empire, after a little bit of a frustrating early game, are definitely pulling themselves back in. They're 2,000 experience up over effect. Yeah, Chappie doing a really good job. Oh, Roche, it's gonna go down so fast. Uh, team Effect can't do nothing about it. Are they gonna give it to Chappie? Probably. Yeah, he's seven uh, zero. Didn't die. Has a Black King bar plus so almost enough gold to buy a full Desolator. Well, we talked about maybe the Sven lacking a little bit of ability to actually farm around the map. He's been able to find it somehow and also be a part of a fair number of kills, 12 of them so far of the 17 of effect. 
Uh, if you're Team Empire now, thinking about this Sven going into the later stages, how worried would you be? Well, Sven still does what he was supposed to do, boost uh, the Warcry, plus he's a heavy damage dealer right now with uh, Blink Dagger, plus they need to care for the next uh, initiation stuff. But uh, let me check the item on Slaughter. He almost has a gold for a Blink Dagger, and they have one, I mean, uh, four staff, plus Shadowfin has uh, Hurricane Pike, so it's e easy to kite around uh, both Clockwork and the uh, initiation from Sven. Okay. So starting to be able to have those answers, and we'll have to watch if you know if that can get sort of a big wombo combo together. Certainly with the Sven stun, Clockwork hook, and a split Earth, if any of them are grouped up together, it could be a huge problem. But it looks like effect now. They're just gonna try and focus down these shrines, take them down, and then make the next move in towards. Well, I'm not exactly sure what they want to try and go for now. What, what's your thoughts? They're just gonna go back to farming because they have ages. They don't want to fight into that. Okay. Uh, smoke is coming Dyer's from Empire. Is Empire is the team that actually wants to fight. They wanna make usage of that Aegis. The unfortunate problem right now is that they are smoking into an area where they don't have vision, and while well, they do have Aegis, it's certainly not impossible for Effect to fight them if they take a bad initiation. Yeah, Effect knows something is up. Look how they're positioning themselves. Fend on the high ground so he can they can disable his blink dagger and also Lone Druid on the high ground. That's just gonna go back so he doesn't get caught first. They know they're smoked because there was no one on the map. Just a little bit late with that rocket flare, which is going to head off over that direction. And now Empire's set up to try and pressure the tower. They ping out exactly where the Pushka is standing. Sigil for a bit of vision. And Dyer's that should do it for the tier 2 tower. Weaver plus... Well, he almost has 300 damage. Minus armor plus purge. Burning the extra mana, some extra damage. In. They need to focus Weaver and Shadowfin. A lot of stuff to focus on, actually, in the fights. Also, Witch Doctor building towards uh, four staff, probably. Staff of Wizardy picked up by him. That's... A little bit scary. Is this turning into the point now where Effect are losing their ability to fight just because of all that mobility that they've got on the side of Team Empire? Well, it's going to be harder for them to fight if when they get those three, four staffs up. Uh, Aegis is uh, down in the next two minutes. Slardar, can he do it? Looking for that initiation. FN swaggering away very quickly. Oh, there is going to be the initiation. They found Arzik as well. Good for Well, four step actually a little bit off the mark. They are going to be able to find another kill. But Roger, in the meantime, takes down King R. Top side of this engagement. It does look like Chappie trying to find that kill in Afrinage. They do find it. A triple for FN over to the side as well. The snowball means that Sadoi is not even going to get the kill. This is going to be a full team wipe. Disaster in the jungle for Team Effect. Yeah, big, big initiation by Slardar. They did what they actually had to do, take down Dazzle first and plus one more hero and Shadowfin positioned himself for a nice Requiem just to deny some damage and actually deal some damage. And uh, meanwhile, Weaver just dealing a lot of damage with those item builds and still has Aegis on. It's gonna be down in 30 seconds, so. Scary times indeed right now. They do manage to throw out a weave on top of Empire, but Empire, feeling comfortable with the way this game is going, are not going to press their luck. Everybody backs out. Looks like they're going to head over. Why is this creep hitting the shrine? How did that happen? <laughs> uh, didn't see it. That's really weird. Um, but anyways, it's it's feeling right now as if Empire, despite being a Rax down, have severely just swinged around the momentum of this game. The yeah, their one Rex is down on the mid lane, so they're gonna get less gold by farming those creeps, but still, they're in a very good position right now. Uh, if you look at the Tusk, uh, and you saw Sven, and just Tusk and the Shadowfin were hitting uh, Sven, but with that extra Solar Crest, Sven just dies in two hits. Yeah. Normally a hero that's capable of dealing with that type of aggression, but no medallion this game for him on the support role, and he does have the armlet, still not completely indomitable as FN is going to move in again. Do they have any vision down? They don't have any. They drop the cogs. That's a nice little play there. And 
Well, FN still able to get the ulti off. Chappie gonna be able to time lapse back out in a way, and Sven gonna continue the chase. There's the crush, a little bit off the mark. Good blink away by Roger. He's gonna be able to turn, try and take him down. Mapochka is gonna drop over there as well. One more right click in the Lightning Storm, able to take down that other Slardar as Chappie and FN run for the hills. Yeah, they were battling on the two fronts. Uh, they were trying to get uh, on Lesh and uh, Sven. SF decided to go for main fighting against Sven, which is not good. He was alone there, but uh, Sven could have died. But quick reactions by him, just dodging that Slardar stun. Meanwhile, they managed to kill both Slardar and uh, Tusk. So, well, and that smoke was directly underneath the ward. Unfortunately, not going to probably bear fruit here. Although, are they heading in towards Roche. Okay, it's not up, but looks like they're going to be heading top, I guess. Uh, Laundry with uh, going uh, MKB, uh, good against Solar Crest because of that uh, missed chance. Uh, Shadowfind has um, what I see. Here? Oh, yeah, right, exactly. That's what I just wanted to say. Uh, he had the uh, butterfly in quick buy, but saw that uh, Silaber has uh, Demon Edge, probably an MKB, so he just decided to go for AC instead because it's kind of useless against. It gives you. A, a lot of attack speed and damage, but uh, the butterfly is the best because of the mischance. Oh, Empire seemed to know that this could be coming. The flare that does reveal him. All right, push back by the cog. Slash those there as well. He's going to be able to control Maposhka. Chappy also may be in a little bit of trouble over here to the side. They get the grave onto Sedoi, keeping him alive. FN trying to get out in a way. He is going to get off the Requiem of Souls. Actually, only hits onto the Phonia and the Arzik. Well, Dazzle, and now Ghostic in a lot of trouble, is going to end up falling. So they take down three for the price of their clockwork. Yeah, it was a good initiation by Sven. They managed to take down Weaver uh, before he got his ulti off. Now he's also going to need to buy back, probably. Or no, they're just going to back off. Uh, they want to kill the shrine right now. That's the second shrine, so bye-bye, shrines. Well, that early tier three tower being taken down, starting to bear some fruit now. And the other thing to keep in mind is Empire is still down a lane of racks. So the pressure is going to be continually on them. The amount of gold they're able to farm is going to continually favor effect. And you can already see the experience and net worth earned swinging back into their favor. What do you feel like is going to be the main objective over the next couple of minutes here for effect to try and continue this momentum swing? Yeah, for both teams, they're gonna try to go for Roche. There's already a creep, a dominated creep from uh, Sven in the Roche pit, so they wanna know when it's up exactly. It's uh, number two or number three Roche? I believe that that was number two. We'll find out in a second, that's for sure. But yeah, I, I think that it was number two. No, yeah. it was number three. They, they got it first on F effect and then they brought it back to Empire. Yeah, so it's Cheese Aegis and uh, that's where the next fight's gonna be. Okay. Um, worth noting, we did have a nice ward placed down here deep by Dazzle. Realized that that could be a area where the fight ends up making out next. There's their creep gone. Leshrak has a BKB. That's going to be a huge item in the in this fight. Yeah. Lone Druid also has his uh, butterfly queued up. Also Talisman Evasion currently on the courier. I make the difference. Hook shot off the mark. They weren't able to get the connection, and well, effect need to wait for the next one. Yeah, that clockwork with the uh, blade mail on and uh, Mjolnir kind of looks scary when he goes in. Yeah, that's a scary sight indeed. Uh, BKB charges also for Shadow Fiend, already down to five seconds at 37 minutes. This is something to be potentially slightly concerned about, in spite of the taunting. Yeah, he got it pretty early. There was a lot of fights, so it's it dropped to five seconds, seven seconds on Weaver. Uh, there's no other BKBs on his team. While meanwhile, Lash has 10 second BKB. Is that a ward dewarded as well? They send in the creep again, and it looks like Roche starting to take a little bit of pot shot damage. Yeah, Clockwork just scouting on the high ground. They have a vision on the Empire. 
There's the flare, looking for that initiation. Pump fakes, goes and set onto Chappie. Nice catch there. They do not have vision. He pops his BKB, trying to run away. Chappie is already fairly low, doing a good bit of damage to himself. Ends up getting a time lapse off Roger in the meantime, trying to run down FN. Is going to end up being able to find him, force staffing back out and away. On the other side, they already took down Maposhka. Everybody else forced to back out, so. A great team fight for effect, and no buyback on either of these heroes. They're also going to catch the Witch Doctor. King R going down, so this should open the path for Roshan. Yeah, back to Rosh and uh, back to pushing. They're going to be full HP, and uh, they can start hitting those tier 3 towers. In fact, we have the swings that go back and forth in this game, and... Certainly it affect the ones that are on top right now. That is cheese for them as well. And rocket flares, clockwork hooks, making all the difference in this game. Uh, Roger really playing uh, out of his mind this game. He has a BKB up and uh, manages to go on Slardar, initiate, and then just keeps hitting uh, Shadowfin, who has to pop a BKB and just run away from him. Yeah. Quite a good answer to this. It's been really impressive. And Shadowfin does a lot of damage, but... Not the tankiest of heroes at this point in time, particularly if you do have that Sven on top of you, but another flare goes in. Awkward has hook shot if you wanted to jump. Play by Ghost Stick, hook catches them all oh, on a two. Cool. Nice hook back in, and well, they're gonna be able to right click Chappie, jump in, Roger on top of the Shadow Fiend, FN already down to half HP as Mapochka gonna try and run away, taking a lot of damage from Zadoy in the back lines. He's hitting away at him, that is going to be a dead tusk. No buyback for either him or the Slardar. Chappie getting caught, getting killed, double kill for Zadoy. The barracks are down, and this could potentially be Mega Creeps. GG is just gonna be called. Yeah, there's nothing they can do anymore. Uh, the game is over once they picked up Aegis and uh, really just uh, monster Sven plus uh, Scylla Bear and really good initiations by Gostik. This this guy was playing this whole qualifier is really good. Really aggressive player who does some kind of weird stuff but it pays off for him. Very, very interested to see how it ends up going. Position for Sven everybody. They've been running it. It looks like Empire were not quite prepared. So Lacoste, looking forward to the next game. Game number two, elimination match potentially for Empire here. Effect on the verge of making it to their first big LAN. I was looking up the stats for this team. I think that their total net winnings for as an organization is like four thousand yeah. dollars or something crazy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, it's it's really I, I gotta imagine an exciting moment for them. Yeah, I, I, I checked that as well. I think Team Empire winnings is like uh, 1 million. And uh, as you mentioned, Team Effect $4,000. So I, I expect uh, Empire to actually ban out Sven, maybe even in the first phase. If not in first phase it, they don't, and uh, Effect doesn't pick it, it's going to be banned in the second phase for sure. All right, well, everybody, stay tuned. Game number two right around the way, as we said, do or die time for Team Empire. Well, effect feeling good after that win. We'll see you guys in just a second. Myself, Lyrical, as well as Lacoste. Keep on watching DAC. This is the final best of three to determine who's going to be going from the CIRS region. We'll see you guys.